very cheap plastic decoration. Make her more creepy. Do I know how to sculpt? No. It looks like he's drooling. <laughs> Bonjour! Halloween is getting very close and I still haven't actually made any decorations. Everything I have is just right there. Hello. Maybe I should put some costume pieces as decoration. But for now, I haven't actually crafted anything. Let's remedy that. You like my outfit? I have the whole process in a previous video if you want to see. So today we can customize some cheap Halloween decorations and make them a little bit more creepy and more unique. Budgets are tight and my schedule also. So how about we do a project that can be done cheaply and quickly? Let's go! Our first victim today will be... The tiniest pumpkin! Removing the stem and I just want to give him a little bit of a carving like you would do on a regular size pumpkin. It is so small, I just want to make it very cute and almost kawaii with big eyes and a small mouth, but I still want it to be a little bit creepy, but cute, but creepy. To add more textures and wrinkles, let's use the good old technique of papier mâché. Papier mâché is a French term and it means chewed paper. Yeah, now you know, sorry. I use an old piece of silk paper that is shredded into small pieces. This and all the materials I just had laying around, my budget for this project is exactly zero. Good thing I am a hoarder for crafting supplies. Trying to add some creases and wrinkles to this little face. You can easily change its expressions by just changing the angles of the eyelids. And the crinkled paper can be used to add a lot of texture to its skin. The little stem can be glued back on and extended with a few pieces of papier mâché. You can go even further with all the textures and the wrinkles, but I just added a little mole on his cheek and I think we are good for this one. Next victim. No, please, no. So this is a very cheap plastic decoration. It even bites up a little. The plan is to somehow break it and I will be able to add like a candle or any sort of light. Make the stem a little bit more interesting and make her more creepy. So I guess I will need to cut bigger eyes. Before I can glue anything on this, we need some sanding. Ugh. Now that the edges of the mouth and the eyes are a bit thin, I'm just bulking them a little bit with some bits of this broken rope. I like it because it has a lot of texture and also it was uh, free from the trash. I'm gluing it with some hot glue. It will be all covered and secured later anyways. These bits are also very practical to replace the stem and make it more interesting. And the unraveled parts are perfect to make him a little bit of a hairstyle. I hid a bit of wire inside of it so I can use it to shape the stem. And the wire goes into the pumpkin so I can use it to attach maybe a candle or some sort of light, I don't know yet. But honestly, I think this face looks a little bit like a clown. So I think we're gonna have to sculpt him a face. And my air drying clay is dry. But I have another. Dumping it in water and wrapping it into cling wrap inside the package actually worked. I've never sculpted a face, but I think I've watched enough face off to know exactly what to do. I'm just slapping a bunch of clay everywhere to kind of ease the volume of the little ropes into the plastic. And when it has enough volume on its face, I just smooth it out with some water and I can just carve some wrinkles. Do I know how to sculpt? No. Did I look at a reference picture of something with wrinkles? No. Will it be perfect? No. But it is very fun and I think I'm getting into sculpting. Maybe I should try sculpting something from scratch and see if I actually like it. Because clay is very pleasant to use. The back of its head is a bit too smooth for its wrinkled face. <laughs> Let's remedy that with some wrinkled paper. 
And I think we are good on the sculpting of the second pumpkin. At this point I was in the middle of a video that was just making three pumpkins, like a small, a medium and this big one. But it looks like it's not gonna happen for this week. So I just have to chop this project into two videos. <sighs> Okay, so you will get a big pumpkin video very soon. Next week is uh, spiders, but the week after you will get the big one. If I manage my time correctly. Ah. I spent the whole day fixing the mistakes of the big pumpkin, but I guess this will have to be another video because there are so many mistakes. I just don't have the time anymore. So let's just focus on our two beauties here. And the first step of painting, and the last thing I will do today before just taking a shower because I'm covered in wood glue, uh, is to just stop thinking and paint them black. The orange I need is just white, red, and ye yellow. Uh, that will make the painting complicated, but let's just keep going. What I like to use for this type of project is little bits of sponge. You don't have to buy the expensive sponge brushes, just cut little pieces and round the corners with the scissors. Then I like to build the colors in layers onto the black. It usually gives me the maximum amount of contrast because this thing will be seen at night mostly. But you can build up the color onto any base. I think it gives a lot of control to adjust the amount of color that you want. And the sponge is very nice to blend the colors in, just like in makeup. I started with the brown on the stem, which ended up basically the same orange as the body, so I think I will just go into green for more contrast. As we go into the lighter colors, I have less and less paint on the brush or the sponge. This is called dry brushing, I think. This picks up on the raised part of the sculpture and it helps make all the little details pop a little bit more. I think we can have a slight touch on the eyes to make them pop and for that I'm going to use UV resin. We want his eyes to be shiny so they look wet and more realistic. And maybe just a little bit on his mouth and nose, so it looks like he's drooling. It's just a baby after all. A very creepy one. Last step is to add some kind of fabric to the big pumpkin. This is to dull the light a little bit and hide the light source that will be inside. I will add a lamp because I really don't recommend using a candle on this one. It is plastic with some fabric inside. That would be very much of a fire hazard. <laughs> Please be careful. 